Hi and welcome back to another video analysis with the Dead Ball Area and Rugby Dump Coaching. An exciting final weekend in the European Rugby Champions Cup saw one of Ulster's best performances of the year with an 8-try demolition of Oyano. And I wanted to look at Rory Skull's first half try which was the result of a counter-attack by Jared Payne from the halfway. When we talk about decision making it's normally in the context of giving a great pass or making a break but just as important is decision making off the ball and in defence. And I think this is a try that's a good example of both some good and bad decision making. The counter attack ball is prime attacking ball and the try scoring sequence starts with a series of mistakes by Iono. The first is how they exit from the 22. The line out has been won by Iono and it's inside their own 22. They've been under a lot of pressure from Ulster for coming up 30 minutes. So it's absolutely vital that Blanc puts the ball into touch near the halfway, but he misses touch badly. And to compound this, there's almost no chase from Oyano, which allows Ulster plenty of time to organise their counter-attack. From clearance kicks, a lot of teams use variations on the free pass rule. The idea is that the main chases will generally come from where the kick was made and that the opposite side of the pitch will have more space. Splitting the pitch here also gives you more options, and here we see Ulster move the ball to the third man, at which point Skulls decides nothing is on and kicks deep into the right corner. Now, if we go back to just before Skull's kick, afterwards watch how Payne and Jackson slide back and across into this area here to fill the space left by Skulls and Cave as they chase the kick. They know the likeliest outcome is Denos will kick back to this touchline and they want to limit his kick and regather options by putting men under the ball. They also then have the option to counter if he misses touch, which he does, and Denos miscues his kick with the ball going to Payne. It's a bad mistake by Denos. Again, Oyano had the chance to relieve pressure and gain territory and blow it. But worse, what it does is take these players out of the game, leaving himself as the only kick chaser. If he'd hit touch, these players would have been back in the game and able to shut down the quick throw option from Ulster. The ball comes to Payne and he has 25 metres, plus a 15 metre channel to make his decision in. We can also see how Jackson, Marshall and Cave have all worked hard off the ball to give Payne options and get numbers around the ball. Blanc is set down trying to back off Payne and buy time for his teammates to organise, but by going compact he's unable to jam back when Payne drags him first left and then steps him off the right, resulting in Ebershon having to step in and make the tackle. And then here we see another poor piece of play from Iono, as Kojo steps in to try and make the hit on Payne instead of just trusting Ebershon and drifting out onto Marshall. That's three defenders sucked in, and Payne puts the ball right into that space and also a straight into a classic support channel formation. First, Marshall has a two versus one and then Jackson has a perfect left and right arrow head option creating a 3 versus 2 which he executes perfectly with Skulls going over for the score. It looks simple and it is, with Ulster's basic skills executed at pace and their intelligent decision making both on and off the ball being key to the attack staying live. In contrast we can see the effect that poor decision by the on players have in shutting down the attacking moves. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.